Dome Sports Talk Worldwide with some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Now let's talk welterweights. Let's talk legends. Right? You got Manny Pacquiao, eight-time division world champion. Manny Pacquiao, the legend, going to fight Lucas Matisse, a world champion himself, right about now. Right? I think the fight is crap. I think it's a cherry pick for Manny Pacquiao. I think, you know, Lucas Marti- Matisse is done for. Never was nothing. And I think it was it's a waste of everybody's time. That was an obvious April Fool's or Bazinga, wasn't it? That was too obvious. Let me tell y'all something. This is a pretty decent fight. Manny Pacquiao coming in here on July uh, the 14th in Malaysia against Lucas Matisse is a good fight. I ain't going to say it's a great fight, but it's a good fight. We know Manny Pacquiao is in the twilight of his career. His last fight was last July uh, against your boy Jeff Horn. Jeff Horn won that fight, but Manny Pacquiao was in there, had his moments, especially round nine. We all know. Um, you know, took some time off the man's a senator for crying out loud. He's not a 100% boxer at this time. Uh, this fight is good and intriguing because of the simple fact Lucas Matisse is dangerous. Lucas Matisse is a formidable opponent. Opponent. He's a regular champion right now in the WBA for the welterweight division. That The real champion is Keith Thurman. Regular champions, we'll get to them in a minute, but whatever. But Lucas Matisse is a knockout artist. That's what makes this in, intriguing. You know, I've only seen him on the back foot once, and that was against Provodnikov. And everybody fighting Provodnikov was going to be on the back foot. All right? And then, but he stood in there and handled that his business. Well, I think he won that split decision, if I'm not mistaken. Lucas Matisse, you know, he's got four losses. Don't get twisted. He's got 39 wins, four losses, I think 36 KOs. Ridiculous. The four losses against real great fighters. We're talking Zab Judah. You know, not lately, Zab Judah. The old one, 2010? That's about nine years ago. Lost him on split decision. Lost to Devin uh, Alexander, you know, also about nine years ago. <clears throat> you could do that. Devin Alexander in his, his prime is, is a good fighter at 140. <clears throat> so those are the kind of things that happen. I don't know if they fought 140, 135. But, you know, and then losing to Postal, that's the only one who stopped him. And Danny Garcia uh, beat him also unanimous to Giannis decision. Luke Matisse was the uh, favorite in that fight against Danny Garcia. Matter of fact, I did another video. That was Danny Garcia's George Foreman moment. His whole camp, everybody was scared for Danny Garcia in that fight. Danny Garcia came through that fight, which, you know, props to him, by the way. People forget that. Lucas Matisse is menacing. He has heavy hands. And if he has to, he can outbox. So for Manny Pacquiao to take this fight, it's pretty good. We know Manny Pacquiao's not going to fight the Keith Thurmans, the Errol Spences of the world. He won't fight Terrence Crawford, and he won't fight Sean Porter. But we know he'll, he'll fight um, the Mayor Khans of the world. He'll even fight Danny Garcia. But he's not going to fight you know, the very best in the welterweight division and whatever at this point. He's a legend already. He can do that. Which, so that's what you earn with you know, those years. So but we're not you know, holding him accountable. He's not in the mix in terms of who's the baddest welterweight, right? Not right now. If you're talking about the last few years, then he's in the mix again. But you're talking about right now, no, he's not. There's three of them boys, or four of them. You can't ignore Jeff Horn. So uh, him fighting Lucas Matisse, I think, is a real, real good fight and a risky fight, right? Because Pacquiao can get knocked out here. He's going to have to be on the top of his game. And to beat Lucas Matisse, he's going to have to bring something special. That's what makes this intriguing. Now, another thing, uh, you know, Matisse is a regular champion. He's a regular champion. And, you know, sometimes the regular champions, they're not going to say that, guys. They're just going to say Pacquiao's trying to get the belt from uh, the champion, Lucas Matisse. I think they should be saying regular because that's a disservice to the real champion. Because the regular champion, let me give you an example. The regular champion in the heavyweight division right now is Manuel Char. Are you thinking that Manuel Char is beating any of the top four or five heavyweights in the division? Before him, it was Lucas Brown. You saw how Lucas Brown was short, how he looked against Dillian White. Before that, it was Shakir, who was beaten by Lucas Brown. Right? That's the regular champion in the heavyweight division. There's another one in the super middleweight division. Right? Tyrone Zoiga, German cat. Right? Pretty good now. Undefeated. But... You just had a tournament in the super middleweight division, right? A tournament, right? Hosted by 
Tyrone Soiger's promoter, Kyla Sauerland. And the super middleweight division wasn't like the cruiser, cruiserweight division when they made the WBWS tournament where all the maddest cruiserweights got in there. Super middleweight was different. James Gales weren't in there. The Gilberto Ramirez wasn't in there. They was looking for people. So the regular champion who was promoted by him, by Kyle Sauerland, wasn't invited or didn't want to come. That's telling you something about the regular champion in the super middleweight division. And there's others, right? There's others. But so the regular championship, they shouldn't really be mentioned. I hope they hurry up and get that up out of here. Because that just means a pretty good dude in that division. That's what that means. Because it doesn't even mean the number one rank or number two rank. Don't even mean that. It means just, okay, WA, we decided to come up with something else. And they do things like that because there's no government body over everything. Like, what the hell is a regular champion? Really? But they won't say it when he walks out and they come in there. They ain't going to say, it, hey, the WBA regular uh, champion of the world. That ain't happening. Champion. So you guys know what time it is. Now, another important point uh, to some of us. When you talk to Manny Pacquiao, you know his trainer is Freddie Roach. Freddie Roach won't be in his corner for this fight, right? Freddie Roach won't be in his corner for this fight. Um, <clears throat> they're going to use the assistant trainer, I think it's going to be Fernandez. Uh, I don't know much about him, but he's been an assistant for a while. Manny Pacquiao has said, has said he trusts him, so that's good enough. You know, so that's good enough, these guys have trust in each other, and whatever. But it is a story because Freddie Roach, he's been there for a while. You know what I mean? So when you think Manny Pacquiao, you think his trainer, you think Freddie Roach. You know how most of the guys are connected who had trainers for long periods of time? You know, Golovkin, you know, you know Abel Sanchez is right there. You know, things like that. Andre Ward, you know, my man Virgil Hunter, is right there. Things like that, right? So <clears throat> this might be an issue, but I don't think so. Let's get ready to get uh, into that fight. You know, we got a, white, a ways away, July 14th. But let me tell you, that's going to be a must-see uh, TV type of match. I think it, excitement has has excitement written all over it. Um, I, this is going to be a good one. I want to see how Manny Pacquiao gets past this one. And the same thing for Lucas Matisse. It's going to be something coming back at him. Let's see if he's going to front foot Manny Pacquiao. Very interesting fight. Don't sports talk. Worldwide, I'm a body, y'all.